So friends, let's solve the next example. This problem is based on the composite bars. A steel bolt of 20 mm diameter passes centrally through a copper tube of internal diameter 28 mm and the external diameter 40 mm. So they have given the diagram to us. So we have got a copper tube. Inside the copper tube, there is a steel bolt and the diameter of steel bolt they have given as 20 mm. Diameters of copper tube are 28 mm internal diameter and 40 mm external diameter. The length of the whole assembly is given as 600 mm. This length is given as 600 mm for us. So assembly has been tightly fitted and we are assuming that when it is tightly fitted, there is no stresses in the steel or copper tube. So now after tight fitting of the assembly, the nut is over tightened by quarter of turn. This particular nut is over tightened for quarter of turn means one by fourth of complete rotation. So we have to find the stresses induced in the bolt and tube and the pitch of the nut is given as 2 mm. The modulus of velocity for steel bolt and the modulus of velocity for copper tube is given to us. So let me say that initially the steel bolt and copper tube are free from any kind of stress. So when you tighten this particular nut, the steel bolt will be elongated. So there will be tensile stress in the steel bolt. Whereas when you rotate this particular nut, this copper tube would be compressed. So there will be compressive stress in the copper tube, sigma c. Okay, let me first tell you what is the significance of pitch over here because they have given us the pitch as 2 mm. Whenever you rotate this nut, so during one complete rotation, this the nut is going to move towards left. So during one complete rotation, the displacement of nut is called as pitch. It is the actual displacement of nut due to one rotation or one complete turn. That is very important point to remember here. Now, in this particular case, the nut is tightened for quarter of turn. So there will be displacement of nut by one by fourth times of its pitch. That has to be remembered. Now let me make it one very important thing clear. So when you rotate this particular nut, there will be elongation in the steel bolt as well as there is a compression in the copper tube. So the overall displacement of nut is the sum of elongation in the steel bolt and the compression of copper tube. So this you can understand with the help of one animation let me show you. So I have divided this whole situation into two separate conditions. The case one I am going to assume that copper tube is rigid. So when copper tube is rigid, if you rotate this particular nut, there will be elongation in the steel bolt. So if I say delta L1 is the elongation in the steel bolt. Now in case 2, I'm going to assume copper tube as flexible. Uh, when I rotate this nut, there will be further compression of this copper tube. And hence this nut is going to move by distance delta L2. So therefore overall displacement of this nut is sum of delta L1 and delta L2. Therefore I can say that if delta L1 is elongation in the steel bolt and delta L2 is compression of copper tube. Therefore as we have seen in the animation the overall displacement of this nut is sum of elongation in the bolt and compression in the copper tube. Therefore you can say that displacement of nut during quarter rotation is delta L1 plus delta L2. So this will give you the final result as delta L1 plus delta L2 equals the displacement of nut during quarter rotation. So during one complete rotation, the nut is going to move by 2 mm that is pitch. So during quarter rotation, it is going to move by 1 by 4 times pitch that is 1 by 4 times 2 mm and that is going to be 0 0.5 mm. Okay. Now let me call as equation number 1. Let us consider the entire assembly. Now in this particular case, there is no external load. We are not applying any load from outside. So when you rotate this particular nut, there will be tensile stress in the steel bolt and there will be compressive stress in the copper tube. So there will be some load acting on the steel bolt. So let's say the load acting on steel bolt is PS and there will be some load acting on the copper tube that is compressive load acting on copper tube that is I'm going to call PC. If PS is the tensile load on the steel bolt and PC is the compressive load on the copper tube. So since there is no load from outside, so whatever load is acting on the steel bolt must be balanced by the load acting on the copper tube. So they are balanced. Load on the steel bolt must be equal to the load on the copper tube because there is no load from outside. So within the assembly, the loads are balanced between steel bolt and the copper tube. So since no external load is acting on the assembly, therefore the load on the steel bolt must be balanced by load on the copper tube. Please remember, I have only taken the magnitude, but the directions are opposite. The load on the steel bolt is tensile while the load acting on the copper tube is compressive because copper tube is compressed and the steel bolt is under tension. Okay, so from here you will get a very simplified condition as load on the steel equal to load on the copper. Load on the steel bolt equals to load on copper tube. So I am going to call this as equation number 2. Now I am going to take equation 1 and equation 2. But before going for equation 1 and 2, you already remember that the elongation in the elastic member that is delta L is given by load into length divided by area of cross section times 
modulus of velocity so i am going to use this particular expression here also in equation 1 so i am going to simplify equation 1 so what will be getting so we have delta l1 plus delta l2 equals 0.5 so that will give you delta l1 is nothing but pl upon a that is load acting on the steel one stand for steel basically into length of steel you have area of cross section of steel modulus of velocity of steel so that is delta l1 plus delta l2 is load on the copper tube length of the copper tube divided by area of copper tube modulus of elasticity of copper tube equals 0 0.5 mm so this can be further simplified as because we know that ps equal to pc so either ps or pc anything i can substitute for each other so let me substitute ps equal to pc here so this you will get as instead of ps i am writing pc pc into ls divided by as times es plus pc into lc divided by ac times ec equals 0.5 mm so if i take pc common we'll be getting ls by asc so what is ls ls is length of steel area of steel and modulus of velocity of steel so let me write down ls is nothing but you can see here 600 mm so 600 mm divided by area of uh, steel area of steel is nothing but pi by 4 times diameter of steel is 20 you can see here 20 mm diameter of steel circular area of cross section times young's modulus of steel so young's modulus of steel is given as 2 into 10 raised to 5 plus now again i have taken pc outside so lc again again 600 we have divided by ac ac is nothing but area of cross section of copper so copper has in outer diameter 40 and inner diameter 28 and then we have ec so modulus of velocity of copper is 1.2 into 10 raised to 5 so this is the left hand side we got simplified and that is equal to 0 0.5 so if you solve this particular equation you can find out the value of pc as 28816.77 newtons now we know that pc equal to ps therefore the load on the steel rod is also same as 28816.77 newtons so we got the value of load on steel as well as copper rod now one thing is very important to remember here that the copper tube is undergoing compression due to rotation of this bolt therefore this will be compressive load and then steel bolt is undergoing elongation due to rotation of the nut so it is basically tensile one okay now we need to find out as they have asked in the question the stresses induced therefore stress in copper tube so that is sigma copper that is equal to load on copper tube divided by area of cross section of copper tube that is nothing but load is we have already got the value of load here so it is 28816.77 well area is nothing but pi by 4 outer diameter is 40 inner diameter is 28 mm so if you simplify this you will be getting the value of press in the copper tube as 44.97 newtons per mm square and similarly you can also find out stress on the steel bolt and if you simplify in a similar fashion you will get value of stress in the steel bolt as 91.72 newtons per mm square so we got the value of stress in the copper tube as well as stress in the steel bolt so this way we can solve other problems which are having similar situations thank you very much